Hi, my name is Pablo Requena and in this video I would like to show you how I do the sharpening. I've had a few people have been contacting me to see if I could give them a few tips as to how to get a really good edge on, on their blades. So I'm just going to show you some of the tips that I uh, use when I'm sharpening and um, there are already quite a few videos out there and you can find that there's quite a bit of information so hopefully between what you find out there and what I give you today you'll find that uh, you're able to do a, a good job with the uh, with your chisels and, and planes so normally when it comes to sharpening you'll find that the most common way of doing it is to have two bevels on the blade that you want to sharp whether it's a, a chisel or, or or a plane. So in this diagram down here, I've, um, usually the angles that, that you'll find is that the main bevel has a 25 degree angle and then there's a very small bevel in the tip at 30 degree and it's this very small area the one that we will be sharpening. Now the good thing about this, this system is that because we are really doing the sharpening this, in this very end at the, at the edge of the blade, then such a small amount of metal is quite easy to do every time instead of having to sharpen up the whole face. But the problem is that when it comes to find the, the angle, unless you have a system that allows you to locate the, uh, this angle every time, then you could end up having a bit of a round shape in your chisel around here, which it's not so good. Uh, so to do this job, this, uh, this tool is really useful. This is what you would call a honing guide. And on the device itself, there is an inscription where you can see some measurements that you need to follow to be able to get the right angles in the blade that you're using. So in this it says that for a chisel, to get a 30 degree a 30 degree angle you need to have 30 millimeters from this edge to the edge of your blade and then you move it along to 40 millimeters and then you'll get the 25 uh, degree angle and for planes it's slightly different you know they all will give you a slightly different measurement depending on the make and because obviously it depends on this setup and the height of the wheel you'll have a different angle depending on, on what it is. So this is a great device if you want to be able to do this job of finding this little bevel every time. Unless you use one of these, you will struggle to find that angle and then eventually have a very round uh, face on your chisel. So this is great. The only thing is that it's a little bit inconvenient to have to be using this all the time, especially when you just want to freshen up the blade and go through the polishing process again rather than grinding and, and repolish and, and resharpening the whole thing. Then um, the way that I do it is that I actually only have one big bevel and I don't have a small angle in the end. So and then my chisels and blades they all vary a little bit. They all between 25 and 30 degrees really. So the reason why I like doing this is because even though I will be using the honing guide uh, from time to time to reestablish uh, the edge sometimes when it needs which is what we're going to be looking at in a minute. I like doing it without this device and what it means is that I just can't get, I can get just the, the chisel or the, or the plain uh, blade and just find this flat which is quite easy to find because it's nice and big and once you find that flat into the stone then you can just um, cut it all the way using most of the stone and you get a really good edge here without the help of anything else. So both systems are really good. I use them both. Um, I use this honing guide for the initial grinding but then I move on to um, to doing it by hand without it. So what we're going to do is that we're going to have a look at a chisel and this chisel is, is probably going to be very difficult to see in the camera but um, because of a job that I was doing I've got several little teeth in the front. They're very small but nevertheless they are there 
and I would like to remove them. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to set up the chisel into this guide. Um, I need to make it a lot smaller first. But I'm not going to follow the dimensions that you get here in the edge because I don't even know what the angle is in here and um, it's not really that important. So what I'm going to do is to be able to set up the guide at the right distance, I'm going to use a ruler and I'm going to place it on the wheel and then I'm going to bring the edge to the to the chisel and I can see that it's not quite the right angle yet so I need to move it along until I can see that this is a good match and what I usually do as well is that I bring it up to the light and then I can see whether this is a good match or not and I still need to move it very very slightly so back to this and I need to just move it very very slightly and I think this is pretty good so all I'm going to do is that I'm going to lock it you can use a screwdriver as well but I like using the pliers so now that this is fixed into the chisel I'm going to come into this uh, a glass basically I have a piece of glass here which is I think is 10 millimeters thick so it's very flat and very strong and very steady and then I have two pieces of sandpaper which I've glued together with a bit of tape and this is 320 grit and even though this is wet and dry I'm going to use it dry because um, um, you know with the wet the idea is to keep the lubrication but also to keep this uh, chisel from heating up too much but we're not going to generate enough heat to be a problem so what I'm going to do is that I'm going to start working on this piece of paper and the idea is that as I'm working on the bevel of the chisel this is going to re-establish re -establish that edge and therefore get rid of all those tiny little dents that I had on it so now that I've done a little bit I'm gonna look at it onto the light and I can see that because I've been working by hand with it I have an area where all of this is nice and and scratched from this paper but then I have, a, I have an area here that is still a little glossy which tells me that we haven't got all the way across the whole surface yet so I need to carry on doing a little bit more until it's the whole face that you can see the scratches from this sandpaper Let's have a look again. Yeah, this is getting closer. I don't know if you can see, but I can see only a little bit of a gloss around here and around here. But all of this is now very scratched from the 320 sandpaper that I have. And again, trying to find the light, I can see that the edge is starting to be, uh, all these little teeth are starting to go. So I just need to do a little bit more work here. And this is it. So now I have a brand new front edge and I have only one facet as a bevel. So what we're going to do now is that I'm going to put this to one side and I'm going to start working with my water stones. I have this little block which is basically going to help me to, to keep the stones from moving around. So I, it's a piece of plywood, 
which is a bit longer than the stones and it has two stops and then just one section here which is so that I can clamp it into the vise so now let's have a quick look at the stones that I use they really are nothing special you can buy this very easily and there are different places where you can buy them as a set uh, they're not too expensive and they do a really good job so the first stone that I'm going to show you is this one which is basically is a flattening stone it's quite coarse and it's got these grooves which makes the cutting um, a little bit more effective so I'm going to use this cutting stone quite often now the first one that we're going to be working with it's quite coarse and um, the grit on this stone I used to have it written down here but it's probably worn out or something anyway it's about 800 so what I'm going to do is that I'm going to use this one first because the scratches on on the chisel are quite severe from the grit that I've been using 320 is quite coarse so I'm just going to flatten the stone before I start working on it and also this is going to create this little slurry in here which it's gonna uh, help with the with the sharpening so I'm gonna try to use as much as I can of the stone so that I don't start creating dips or hollows into into the stones which are not really that um, strong they are quite soft and that's why they're so good for for cutting and and you can see all this darkness is, is the metal that is coming off so let's have a quick look at it and I can see that this is already making uh, a new set of scratches here which are a lot smaller I'm gonna do a little bit more here and I'm gonna use a bit more water I always want to keep this surface wet and then I can clean all this black which is going to be making the stone more efficient so while I still have the honing guide on it this job is really quite easy the only problem comes when you want to do the back of the chisel now it's okay to just use this bit and carefully you could just put it here and basically what we're doing is cutting the metal that's been folded over this side otherwise we're never going to have a good good edge we need to work on both sides but this is to me this is a bit in the way now so what I'm going to do is that I'm going to remove it and because I have a big edge here that I'm able to find quite easily what I'm going to do now is that I'm going to be working without it I'm going to move on to the next grid the next stone it's uh, 1200 uh, yeah 1200 and like before I'm going to flatten it up first And now what I'm going to do is that I'm going to make sure that I find the flat of the chisel first, the flat of the bevel, and I'm not going to go into it just with my hands doing the job. I want to get my hands into my body so that it's my body, the one that it's helping me to keep the, the, the right angle because um, it's, if I exaggerate the movement, this is what we'll be doing. So basically your chisel is going to be doing this. But if you do it with your body, you are much more stable so you always have to think about working as your whole body as a unit so I bring it here and then I need to put a fair amount of pressure because this is metal after all and we need to make a bit of an effort here but it's not too complicated there you are and then the reason that I like not having the honing guide is that I can bring the cross the chisel all the way across and make sure that I have a really good 
flat here. If it's here, it's very easy to lift it up and then that is not going to work. But if I have it all the way across, not only I'm helping to flatten down the stone and avoid having a, a depression in the middle, but also I know that I have a good flat on the back of the chisel. And that is what I want. I want to have a really good flat face in this side and in this side. So now I can, I can see that I'm ready to move on to the next grid. So what I'm going to do is that now we're going to start polishing the metal. And the idea of this is that if we just lift the chisel like this, we still have lots of tiny, tiny scratches. And what it means is that if we were able to have a very strong magnifying glass, we would see that in the very edge we have lots of little peaks and each one of them is the end of one of the scratches. And even though it's very sharp already and it will cut very nicely, this edge will, will not hold for very long because each one of those little peaks individually is not as strong as if it was one solid edge in the front. And that solid edge is what we achieve by polishing the blade. So we're removing the scratches by going up in grade until eventually there are no scratches. So this stone, it's 4,000, yeah? This is a 4,000 uh, grit stone. And like before, we are going to flatten it and clean it. And again, we have this little mud here, which is really useful. And now we just have to go back to it. So you can see how it's quite easy to find the flat of the chisel when you have only one bevel. I'm going to turn it around this way now. because I want to use as much as I can of the stone so that they stay flatter for longer. And now I can go back and do the back of the chisel again. And I put good pressure with these two fingers in the middle of the chisel and that is going to guarantee that we don't lift it up. If we bring it down, it won't matter. We'll, we'll just damage the edge of the stone, but we're not gonna damage the chisel. But if we lift it up, we'll damage the stone and we will lose the edge that we've been producing here. So we're going to have a look and see. Right, so this is now starting to look really good. I don't know if you'll be able to see, but what I'm getting here is that I still have some scratches, maybe in this area there, but this face is starting to be a bit like a mirror. It's not a hundred percent glossy and in fact I don't see myself so well in it but the mirror is coming. So the more glossy this face is the less scratches that we have and we also have quite a bit of gloss here so we need to get it there and we also need to get it in this area here. So we've got a bit more work to do so I'm going to clean the stone again And we're going to do a little bit more, so over here. And don't go forward until you're confident that you are flat onto the stone. If you're not sure, then you know, don't, don't do it. But you'll find that it's, it doesn't take too long to, to get the hang of this and it's quite quick, I'm, you know, I'm taking my time at the moment because I've been explaining all these things, but it's, um, it's a really good way of having a really good edge very easily. Now, if you didn't want to do this and you wanted to have the secondary bevel that many people use, which is absolutely fine, then all you need to do is to do exactly the same thing that I'm doing, but just moving the honey guide 
slightly in position following the indications on the guide and that will produce a very very thin edge in the front okay so at the moment here let's see if we can have a little close up to see so the gloss is now all the way across here and then also I have it all in here I can see some scratches in here but on the edge and around here it's all really good so I'm happy to move on to the next to the next stone now the next stone it's um, 8000 grit and for the job that I do I find that it's more than enough you find that there are other stones available in the market that they can go up 10 15 20 or even 30,000 and of course the higher the the number the finer uh, the the edge that you're gonna be making it's also a bit of an investment because a good piece of stone is not so cheap um, like that high up in grey in grit these ones you can buy these uh, three the I've got four stones here but in a set you really only get the 1200 the four and the 8000 um, and I think that you know you can find that for a reasonable price but when you start buying stones individually of high number then you can double or even triple the the price so just bear in mind whether it's that that's worth to do for you or not so we're back here with the 8000 stone and i'm doing exactly the same thing making sure that i get a flat and then move it forward So at this level, I like spending a bit of time and I'm not gonna do that. Otherwise, this video is gonna end up being a little bit too long and, and there's a little bit more that I would like to, um, to show you. So what I'm going to do is that I'm just gonna show you what this is doing and I'm gonna do the back as well. And then I'm going to move on to the next thing I want to show you so here basically this gloss is is now coming up and at the back as well I can see there's still scratches but basically I just need to carry on working on this stone for maybe another five minutes or so but this edge is here already and if I want to do the typical test that you'll find is that if you get a blade you could just cut it really easily and um, so this is a really good good edge so chisels you know obviously the, the thinner the chisel the a little bit more tricky it's gonna be you really need to get familiar with sharpening and the more sharpening you do the better that you will get like with everything of course um, but it's not that difficult you know I really encourage you you know spend time doing sharpening often because then your job is going to be so much easier so now we're going to have a look at a block plane and if you had any uh, problems with the blade uh, or, or any dents or anything then just go back to the very core sandpaper like I done with the chisel but this is not the case with this one this this blade is actually not that bad at all so what I'm going to do is that I'm not going to go back to the um, um, to, to do it with all the stones. I'm just going to go back to this um, 1200 stone and like before I'm going to flatten it and because my bevel is there already it's sort of quite easy to find it again and this time I just come from this side and then cut it back so this way you can also do it this way, whichever, whichever way you find that you are more comfortable with. I do it in both ways. The main thing is to make sure that your hands are not all over the place, but you got a good stance here and you can control this. And then the same here. Now, for the back of the blade, what I'm going to do is that and I've got a little bit more to do here because I can see that 
this is a little rough now from this tone but it's still a little glossy in the front so I'm gonna have to be doing more here but I just want to show you what I do so that then we can um, see the important bits so normally would you you could just go flat into into the back and for the chisel that's great because very often you want to use the chisel flat into your work to to level something up but a blade doesn't a plane doesn't go like that you don't need to be doing that at all so to make sure that I have a very easy edge to work on here what I do is that I put a 0.5 millimeter ruler on this edge I put a little bit of water so that it will create a bit of suction and it won't move so the back of it now is being raised very slightly so I'm actually making a very very small bevel in this side which means that it's very easy to have a really good flat edge rather than having to be flattening all this metal with the chisel um, if you have to do it then that's fine you know but if we can avoid or if we can save a bit of work with the planes it's absolutely fine so the, the plane now is resting on or, or the blade is now resting on the ruler and this front edge and that front edge is the one that we are now getting very flat and really good so I'm just gonna carry on working I need to do a bit more work on the front so I'm just gonna do that and get this blade completely sorted because I want to show you the the glossing up as well so bear with me and I will just be a couple of minutes so now yes the front edge it's also satin now from the scratches so now that I have this done I'm going to do a little bit more at the back now to make sure that I get the metal that is being folded back so now we're going to move on to the next grid which is 4000 and this stone is exactly the same width as the other stone so when I put this ruler here in the edge I'm going to have the same angle but I'm going to do the bevel side first This is a job that I've learned to love over the year because when I first started making guitars I found that sharpening wasn't my forte and I was always struggling with getting a good edge on my tools and I suppose over the years like with everything the more you do the more familiar you get and then you understand what you're doing better so I've got a good edge here now and I'm gonna gloss this up on this side All right, don't move there. So I've got to do a little bit more here. I can see that I haven't really touched that corner there, but it's coming along and the front edge is really nice. So I just want to do a little bit more over here. And it's very important to flatten in the stones because doing this is great but you could end up having a little groove in the edge and you don't want to do that to your stone you want to keep them nice and flat so it, every time that we're doing this is helping to level everything up so now i'm going to do the very last uh, stone which is the 8000 and um, you'll notice that this stone is just very slightly narrower than the other ones so to get the same angle at the back all I'm going to do is to 
bring the ruler slightly out but also I'm not too worried because all that will do is to raise it up even more and then just touch the very edge there so in a way it's actually quite convenient so let's do a few passes on this face and again I'll need to spend a bit of time on this to get it really nice but at the moment I can just do a little bit and then I can show you what it looks like yeah that's great and then on the other side a bit of water myself but basically this has now got a really good edge um, but I can do a little bit more work because I can still see some scratches on these uh, surfaces so basically this is this is what I do it's fairly simple I think the most important thing of, of uh, to bear in mind here is that you need to practice a lot and it does take a little bit of time to get familiar uh, with the process and to also to, to develop a touch because uh, you know you develop some kind of uh, muscle memory muscle memory muscle memory with with you um, with everything that you do and then you tend to get back again to the same positions that you've been doing over and over and over so practice and repetition is really helpful for for this job so like I said earlier on there are many jobs uh, that you need to do uh, with with the blades and with the with the chisels and the sharper the chisel is the safer that the job is and the easier that it is to cut the wood so sharpen up as much as you can so this is as much as i'm gonna show i hope that you found this helpful and until the next time